Okay, uh, I want us to take a minute here to look at uh, parabolas because um, the way you're going to be making some curved uh, lines on your Desmos drawing is going to be through uh, parabolas. So I want to take some time here to look at parabolas. We can give this a title. Um, we can just give it a title later. Let me just start here. Let's go to view and let's put some grid uh, rule grid. There we go. Okay, when you have a parabola, which is basically like a U-shaped uh, function, let me let me draw here like that. When you have a parabola, uh, it is uh, basically a U-shaped function. So the easiest parabola that you can use, that you can come up with, is the one that goes like this, y equals x squared. Um, and so that parabola looks like this. You have um, the vertex, and then you have 1, 1, and then 2 up 4 on either side. And, and you can continue, but we'll stop here, and that's what this parabola looks like. So this is basically um, the what we call parent function. But there's a lot of variations of parabolas, so they can look different. And to understand variations of parabolas, we're going to use this, uh, what we call the vertex form of a, par a parabolic equation, y, or a quadratic equation, y equals, we're going to put an a there, and then x minus, and then h, and squared, and then plus k. Okay, I think, uh, some things to note um, are the variables um, a, h, and k. Those are placeholders. Oh, holders. Um, let me change the color. This is not too... Um, so placeholders, what that means is that there should be numbers there. And when I say numbers, they could be any numbers. They could be whole numbers, so no decimals, or they could be decimal values. But they are placeholders. They're just there um, as a template, if you will, to hold the place for a value. Now the reason why we identify them is because they carry some importance. Let's talk a little bit about A. If A is more than one, uh, what it does is that your parabola gets skinny, or I'm gonna call it um, narrow, Na narrow parabola. Now let me sketch what that might look like. So compared uh, to what we have here, uh, maybe your parabola is a little skinnier, so maybe it's like that orange one, right? That's when A is bigger than one. When A is less than one, your parabola gets wider, or I'm gonna put there wide, and what that might look like is maybe something like this. Now why is that important? I, I actually accidentally made like a W shaped, that should be like that. Why is that important? Is because depending on what you're trying to sketch, depending on what you're trying to sketch, you might need a wider or a narrow parabola. Uh, one thing also to note is that if A is a negative value, which is when we say less than zero, so if A is negative, then the parabola is upside down. And that would look something like maybe like this. And so let me just make a note here. This is when A is less than zero. This is when A is a number less than one. Notice that I say less than one, but um, but non-negative. Because what negative does is it's just gonna make it go upside down. The skinny parabola, which is the orange one, is when A is bigger than one. Oh, uh, is there an undo? Yeah, there is. When a is bigger than one, greater than one, and then the red one, in this case, that's the parent function, that's when a equals one, which actually corresponds to that one. 
So if we, again, that's what A does. Changing A is gonna make the parabola narrow, skinny, or wide, or it could also make it go upside down in this function, this equation. Now let's then look at uh, H and K because there's also something to be said about H and K. Let me sketch this, oh, excuse me. Let me do a better job here. I want to just sketch another graph. Let's say that I want a parabola whose vertex is not at the origin. Now I'm using the actual terminology because I want you to get familiar with the terminology of vertex. Now the vertex is at location HK. And what is the vertex? It's the uh, location where the parabola changes direction. So point where parabola changes direction. What I mean by that is like, suppose that, and I'm gonna erase this, but I wanna get my point across. Suppose that you're driving, drawing a parabola and you're going down, 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 down. And then you get to the very bottom and then you start going up. Well, you went, you changed direction. You went from going down and then eventually you went up. And so that location is called the vertex. Or maybe you're going up, 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 up. You reach the high point and then you start coming down again. Again, that location is called the vertex. I'm going to erase this because I want to use the graph. I just wanted to emphasize what the vertex is. So let's say that I want a, a, a parabola whose vertex is right here. And I want it to go up like that. I don't care right now so much about uh, the width, uh, about whether it's a narrow parabola. Actually, I'll just put a, it's going to be one. And so what we do then is we say, okay, what are the coordinates of this point right there? What's well, one, two, three, that's to the left, so that's negative three, and then one, two, up. So the coordinates are negative three, up two. And that location of the vertex is what tells you what H and K are. So H in this case would be negative three, K would be two. And then if we just consider uh, A to be one for now, uh, then we can say that the parabola here would have an equation that looks like this. Y equals, we're using one for A just for now. Recall that we have this general equation, X minus whatever H is. And so I'm gonna put X minus, and H happens to be negative three, so I need to put negative three in parentheses here squared plus k, k is two. So the equation for this parabola would be one, y equals one times x. I'm gonna, so I'm subtracting the negative value and when we subtract negative quantities, we do plus, plus, so that becomes plus three. And then I'm gonna then say squared plus two. So I've, place to the vertex at a location that I want here, negative three to the right, two up. And then if I wanted to, and I'm just gonna do it on the same graph to, so I don't um, graph more here. Let's say that I want a parabola that goes upside down and it, it is at two to the right and then two up. And the parabola goes something like this. And I'll say A is one again. Well, the equation for this, recall that the vertex right here, that, that coordinate R is two to the right, two up, and that when we find our vertex here, that is H and that is K. So the equation for the parabola, the green parabola would be something like this. Y equals, A in this case is one, but because the parabola is going down, it has to be negative one. Remember that, you know what, let me use green. There's no point in using a different color, the graph The graph is green. So y equals a, a is one, 
but because the parabola is upside down, it has to be negative. And then x minus h, h is positive two, so I'm just gonna put minus two squared plus k, in this k, k, k is two as well. And so now we have an equation for the green parabola. And this was an equation for the blue parabola. And there's key differences here, right? Now I do want us to use this when we're graphing on Desmos because this is how we're gonna do some curved paths. And I'm gonna show you in a minute how we're gonna do that. But this is basically the biggest takeaway here from parabolas. If you wanna make uh, the parabola a little narrower, so a little skinny, skinnier, you make a bigger than one. If you wanna make it a wide parabola, you make a less than one. And I basically, what I'm trying to say here is that it has to be a decimal value, like 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 or really any decimal value. If you want it to go upside down, you make a, you make a, a negative. And then where do you want to center your parabola? Where do you want the vertex to be right here? That's what H and K are. And that goes again in our general equation right here, H and K. And so in this case, we have two different formulas, two different parabolas, two different equations. Now, I want to show you how this looks in Desmos. Before you actually start um, drawing these curved lines on your, dress, on, on your Desmos um, drawing. Let's give it a minute here because it takes a little bit when I connect this back. Okay, I'm gonna minimize this. I do want this, so I'm gonna, for now, get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Uh, by the way, notice that I already have the tie here. There it is. Now that I have the tie, I can actually start, I'm not gonna use these points anymore, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, so I can start deleting them. Um, if I don't think I'm going to use them anymore, I I don't I'm not expecting to use point one, two, three, four, five. Maybe I might use point seven and six because the tie goes up here. So I'll, I'll just delete these, and it just gets a little easier to read. So I'll leave six and seven, but there's the tie with lines, and I've restricted the domain. Anyways, I'm going to save that. I want to make a new uh, blank graph here. And because I want to show you how these parabolas work, the general equation is y equals a times x minus h. How do you get uh, the square? Do you do shift and the number uh, shift six, which is like the little up arrow, and so that puts the little line up there, and so I put a two, and then plus k, and it says add a slider. I'm going to add a slider for all of them. It initializes them all to one. So if I want to shift my parabola sideways, that's what uh, I would have to change H. So if I move H, notice I moves further to the right. And then if I move it this way, moves it this way. So that's what H does. K moves my parabola, the vertex up or down. It looks like the parabola gets wide, but it's not. that's not really what's happening. It's just moving the vertex up or down. By the way, I can place a point at the vertex by saying whatever H is and K is, and there's the point. We can add a label, we can call it vertex. Right? And so moving the slider moves the vertex up or moves it down. That's what K does. And then moving H moves it sideways. Now for now, I'll just put it out, I basically, so I can get my point across here, I'll leave it at zero, zero, and zero. Notice how it's right at the origin. The origin is, is this right here, zero, zero. That's where the x and the y axis intersect. Now let's play with a, because I want to show you what a does. If I make a big, it makes my parabola skinny. If I make a small, when I say small, I guess not negative, but like a number less than between zero and one. You see, notice how it gets wide right there. And let me actually put a uh, numbers in here. 
So 0.5 makes it a less wide, 0.8 makes it less wide until I get to one. And then if I go past one, it makes it even narrow, more narrow, like that. So I'll put a one there. Now, how do you restrict a parabola? You do it the same way that you do lines. Say you only want half, the right half of the parabola, then you would restrict the domain. You would say something like, I want my parabola, but for values of x that are between zero, uh, less than, where's the less than right here, less than, come on less than or equal to x, less than or equal to, I want, let's say I want it to go up to uh, 2.5, 2.5. And so now I only have a half of the parabola. I have, I'm starting for x values that are between zero and 2.5. And so that would be starting right here all the way to 2.5, which is like around right here. I only want my parabola in that section. Recall domain. Um, is how we restrict the parabola from moving sideways. So it's not gonna be going past zero or past 2.5. Let me just save this here. Let's just call this parabolas. So we can play with it later on if we need to. Which by the way, if you follow along in decimals as you're looking at this video, feel free to follow along, play with it and, and see how this works. Now let me show you what how I'm looking, how we're going to do, use parabolas in our drawing. So if I go to my geometry final, I'm going to open that graph. I don't see anger here, but it's because I, I hit them. Look, you see the, like the neckline right here, the collar line from the shirt that looks to me like a parabola. I'm going to center it right here. I'm going to say that the vertex is right here. So remember, I'm going to first play, put a point at the vertex. So I'm going to say here the vertex is going to be, uh, it's almost at zero and then maybe like negative two point, maybe negative three. Okay, you see it's right there. That's the, I'm going to say that's the vertex. I'm going to add a label here. Uh, because it's a vertex, I'm going to call it V1 because it's the first vertex I'm using. And now I want to make a parabola. And so I use, remember, you can look at your notes that we just took. It says um, A, so A is how wide. I'm gonna put one, just start with one for now, and then X minus H. You look at your vertex, the, the point that you drew, H is that first number, so in this case it's zero. And then you move your cursor and you put the shift and the number six, that's the little arrow key, and you put a two. And then plus K. K is the Y coordinate of the vertex, which is negative three. So I can put plus a negative three or I can just do minus three. Notice how the parabola shows up right there. Let me just kind of hide this for a minute. There it is. Now this parabola is too skinny. I need to make it wide because I want it to like go along the outline here of the collar. And so I am gonna guess here, I'm gonna start, so I'm gonna, to make this wide, I need to decrease A. So I'm gonna, instead of one, I'm gonna do 0.5 and see how that looks, okay? I need it, it got wide, but it needs to be wider. So I'm gonna keep going down, uh, 0.1. Notice how it got wide, still need to go wider. This is sometimes a tricky part, like what is less than 0.1? Well, le less than 0.1 is 0 0.09. Still not wide enough, 0 0.01. That's too wide. So I went too far down. I need I need to go up 0 0.05. Okay, I need to go down a little more. 0 0.03. And there is a guessing component to this, which I'm okay with. I think that's a little too wide. So I'm going to do a little more than 0 0.03. That would be like 0 0.035. There we go. Now, obviously, you notice that it's not quite exactly where you want it to be. Like, notice right here, it's not quite, it's not hugging. It's not right over the line, but it's okay. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're just trying our best. Uh, the best way to do this would be to do half a parabola over here with an equation, and then another half over here that would be different. Uh, but that is um, up to you. I'm not gonna grade you based on uh, how perfect you got your, your, 
your drawing, what I want is for you to get familiar with these equations. Now I do want my parabola to not to stop. I'm just going to say right here. Okay. So that's negative. Uh, let me look at the, the grid right here. Uh, negative 11, negative 12, negative 13. I'm going to stop it at negative 13. So I'm thinking I'm looking at the bounds for my domain, negative 13. And I also wanted to stop maybe like right here, which looks to me like 11, 12, like maybe 11.5. So I'm going to restrict the domain here. After I write my parabola, I'm going to say I want it to go from negative 13, less than x, less than 11.5. And now you see this parabola, it's not perfect. Um, maybe, as a matter of fact, I think for me, I would actually do half of a parabola over here with the vertex right there. And then another half on this side with the vertex right there. But now you can see, let me get rid of that. Now you can see kind of like the neckline right there, the collar. And so you start working with parabolas to draw these curved lines. Let me do one more just so you can see um, where else we can use a parabola. I mean, there's all kinds of places here because it's a curved, um, there's a lot of curves, but I'm, I'm gonna look at this portion of the eye right here. I'm gonna make a parabola that its vertex is maybe right here and it's gonna go down. So I need to get this point right here. Uh, let's see, that looks to be like very close to eight and up like maybe 12.5. So I'm gonna put a vertex there. I'm gonna call this eight to the right, 12.5 up. And notice how it shows up right there, right? I think maybe I can go a little higher. So 12.6, 12.7, 12.6. That's my vertex, I'll call, I'll call that, cause it is a vertex, I'm gonna call it V2. And then we say, okay, to get write a parabola, we use y equals, uh, remember it's a, let me just put it up so you can see it. This is the general form right here, a, and then in parentheses, x minus h, close your parentheses, squared, that's an exponent, plus k. And h and k are where the vertex is at, h, k h negative three up to that's h k so right here my h would be eight my k would be 12.6 they're both positive and so i'm going to i'm going to put a one for a just for now x minus h h is eight and then shift and the number six gives me the exponent two i press the arrow to the right and then plus K, K is the Y coordinate of the vertex, 12.6. Oh. Mm. And there we go, we have a parabola. Uh, it's looking like it should go down instead. So how do we make it go down? Well, we look at our notes and to make the parabola go down, A has to be less than zero, which means it has to be negative. And so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna put a negative right here in front. And now my parabola is upside down, which is perfect. That's what I want. I do need to make this wider so that it hugs this the eyebrow right here. And to make a parabola wide, you need to make that number, A, you need to make it less than one. Let me just zoom in here so you can see a little better. So what's less than one? Well, 0 0.5 is less than one. Okay, that's not wide enough. So what's less than 0 0.5? 0 0.1 is less than 0 0.5. There we go, that's starting to get a little wide. That's perfect. Uh, it looks like it's not quite hugging it right here, but it's okay. I can maybe stop it right here and then make a straight line and then make a, a small parabola right here. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say that I want the parabola to start uh, maybe like around, this is four. And so every unit is half a unit. So maybe 4.5. So I want it to start at 4.5 and I want it to stop right here at eight to the right. 
And so I'm going to restrict my domain. I'm going to say I want my x values to be no, uh, between 4.5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 8. And there we go. So now we have this parabola. Okay, and so what is important with the, with when you're graphing these is to first identify the vertex. Uh, remember, the vertex is like the point, this point on the parabola where it goes from going down to start going up, or in this parabola when you're going up, and then when you get the high points, you start coming down. So that's the vertex. And so the key here is to see where the vertex is going to be. And once you know where the vertex is going to be, you can start graphing your parabola. There's a ton of different locations. Like right here, I can see a parabola for the arm coming down. Where the vertex would be here, and I would only do the left half of the parabola going down. So a ton of places where you can start uh, drawing these uh, parabolas. Uh, curved paths, you see the color right here? I could do a vertex right here, and then maybe draw a parabola that goes up right here. I don't know if that would be perfect. Sometimes you might have to do the vertex like maybe right here and then maybe do another parabola over here because of the curvature. So the curvature is not always uniform. Um, there's locations where the curvature changes. For the mouth, you see right here for the, the lips, outlining the lips, I can see a parabola where there's a vertex right here and then I only draw the left half of the parabola and then I can draw another parabola at the same vertex, but it's wider, and I only draw up to right here. And then I can put another vertex right here and draw a parabola that goes up and only draw the left half of it. So there's a ton of places where we can uh, start drawing these parabolas. So I'll go ahead and give it a try. Look through the notes. Ask questions. Obviously, if you, if you need to have some, any confusion, reach out to me or your classmates so that I can help you address any confusion. Uh, just so you can see what we have thus far, um, I have the following. And so it's starting to take shape. Obviously, we're still a long ways, but it's starting to look a little better. Save, and make sure, well, make sure you save constantly because you don't want to lose your work.